Hey guys, welcome to BP the Bible Perspective. This is going to be a little short kind of video, but I want to talk about this, uh, this little picture I came across. And it, it, you know, you see the title here, Man Made Religions. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this, uh, it features five men who started major religions. I'm gonna, I'll briefly go through with the, go through them in a moment. And obviously, this is not all. I mean, obviously, Catholicism um, is worse. But what I want to kind of talk about is, I, I'm going to come back to these men in a moment. But when we talk about man-made religions, the reason why I kind of just want to just highlight this is because um, these men started religions now that have lasted now. They started around the same time, around the 18th century. As I said, I'll come back to that and just show you the difference. <coughs> uh, excuse me. But um, how do we know what is true in real religion? How do we know, you know, the, these men lead millions? So in order to understand that, we kind of have to go back for a moment and start with, of course, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ himself who is the head of the church and he spent three and a half years actually 30 years 33 years on this planet the last three of them um, he spent with 12 disciples that he chose they were with him they were eyewitnesses they saw him they heard from him they were taught by him and when he ascended into heaven he pass on the authority of his teachings to those 12 apostles. Later we would come and we can follow this to the book of Acts, <coughs> to the book of Acts. Later we would come across the apostle Paul, whose distinct apostleship was to the Gentiles, in which we have the majority of the New Testament by which we study today. Now, the age of the apostles will take us to the end of the first century. So somewhere around between 80, 95 and going to the first century, the early years of the first century, 80, 100, 80, 105, somewhere around there. The last apostle died, John. And when he died, he passed on the oral traditions of the New Testament plus the Old Testament, as well as the written his letters and other letters then we entered into what was called the age of the church father they were just simply leaders during this period of time for about three to between oh the end of the, the beginning of the first century 8100 to somewhere around 600 bc now i'll get to that date in a moment the church fathers the, 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 there were a couple of things that were primary to understand about that. I guess important. It's not that they were perfect, uh, because many of them had strange beliefs and doctrines. But what they did do was that they gathered together the writings of the apostles. They determined, and there was a method by which they determine what were the original genuine writings of the apostles and then that is what we call scripture now I say that because there were plenty of writings some of those writings were called the apocrypha writings but the early church fathers rejected them because they did not meet the standard by which you could measure for example, the writings of Paul, Peter, um, Matthew, okay, the original apostles. So after that was established, we entered into the age of the Catholic Church around AD 60, a little before then. And for the next nearly thousand years, the Catholic Church reigned supreme in Christianity. Those were dark years because the scriptures themselves were shut up from the common people. 
Then you had corruption, unmeasurable corruption through popes and the Catholic teaching. In other words, how they taught Christianity. Then as we get into somewhere around eight, you know, of the 14th century, you can probably start and say the seeds of the what's called the Reformation began to be planted in the 13th century. But as we come around the 15th century, we had the 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 Protestant break um, led by Martin Luther. But again, these men weren't perfect. So as we come now into this period of the Protestant break from Catholicism, and we come into the um, 17th and 18th century, then we see these men started to arise. Now, I'm not certainly I'm not saying that all of these men were Christians, and I'll get to briefly breaking them down. Um, but the 18th century kind of marked not only an industrial awakening in America, but also a humanistic awakening. And so basically you had this rebellion against the organized religion. But yet the problem, of course, is that in this organized religion, many of them begin to found their own religions based upon excuse me, their own thoughts. And that's what these men have in common. And even though when you look at John Smith, Charles Parham, Joseph Smith, Charles Russell, William Miller, even though they're different, especially Joseph Smith and Charles Russell. Now, now Joseph Smith started the Mormon religion um, Charles Russell started Jehovah Witness. Now, again, this is just a snippet here because you have many other people. Uh, Mary, Eddie Baker started the Christian Science. We could go on and on and on. I, I just wanted to kind of show you sometimes how the bad seed of religion starts. That if you go... Now, Charles Porn, by the way, can probably come later, closer to the 19th century. And you could probably kind of credit him back to kind of the seeds of the Pentecostal, which later would also give birth to the charismatic movement. Okay. Um, what these three men have in common, okay, is starting religions and, and teachings, doctrines that they themselves made up. In other words, you can trace a lot of their doctrines directly back to them not scripture. And that's the point I wanted to point out here. In other words, not one of these men can say that they were inspired by God. We have no credible evidence to show that they were inspired by God. Further, what we do have is scripture to show that they wasn't inspired by God. In other words, a lot of what they taught was contrary to the already written scripture that we have. So, you know, um, I thought it was interesting to see when there's this kind of picture here when it says man-made religions, which I'm going to say it's true. They are man-made religions concocted by men. And in some cases, they pervert the scriptures. They may pepper some of their beliefs with the scriptures. But as always, if we read the scriptures, we can dissect and discern everything that's false in which every one of these men taught. I just, again, I just wanted to kind of explore that. Like I say, much, much, much more could be explored about some of the man-made religions and the denominations, the origins of the denominations. But the idea is that what, what these men have in common is not that they were inspired by God because we can take the scripture and refute every wrong thing that they do teach. Look, that is my perspective. I'd love to hear your thoughts and love to hear your comments. Add them to the comments section. All comments are welcome. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to be Peter Piper Perspective. The next time, 
see you then.